In this video we're going to have a look at the program construct referred to as sequence and we're going to do this by looking at a program we've seen earlier in the playlist and the program is this one here for calculating the gross pay of an employee and we can see it has four lines of code or four individual program statements. Now the first line of code is hourly pay rate equals and we can see I've pointed to it here. Now this will execute and the user will enter the hourly pay rate which will be read in and stored in the variable. Then this line of code is executed. Then this line is executed where the gross pay is calculated. And finally this line of code is executed where the gross pay is actually displayed onto the console. Now what we've looked at there is a sequence of instructions where each one is completed before we go on to the next particular program statement. We can represent this with a flowchart and here we can see we start the flowchart and then we can see there's an arrow saying we go on to the next step in the program which is to obtain the pay rate. When that's done we go on to the next step as shown by the arrow to obtain the hours worked. Then we go on to the next step, which we can see is calculate the gross pay. And then finally, we can see we display the gross pay. And when we've done all of those steps, we end the actual program. Now, this is an example of a flowchart, and it shows the steps that exist in that particular program. We start, and when we start, we perform the next step, obtain the pay rate, the flowchart then says we do the next step, obtain the hours worked, and we do that unconditionally. Then we calculate the gross pay, and then unconditionally we display the gross pay, and then we end. And throughout that, you heard me use the word unconditionally. Now, unconditionally is quite important when we talk about this sequence. It means you do one of the steps, and then without meeting any conditions you go on and you do the next step in the sequence you complete that and you unconditionally go on to the next step and this notion of unconditionally simply means that whatever the step is you must complete before you go on to the next step and there's no conditions to meet in between you don't or maybe do the next step no you do it one after another as shown by the actual flowchart so you'll often hear people talk about sequence as an unconditional sequence of steps that take place when a program executes. Now a flowchart is something really for a programmer's mind's eye. It's not something that you actually design with. And we'll come on to that a little bit later. Here we can see a Nasi Schneiderman chart. And this is something that is used to help programmers design programs. And we can see it has a step obtain the pay rate, then the next step is obtain the hours work. As shown by the arrows here, we calculate the gross pay. Then we go on to the fourth step, which says display the gross pay. And that's an illustration of a Nasi Schneiderman chart that shows the stages. And you can see there's no arrows in between. It's understood that you go to each step in turn. Now a program would do that, or they would do this. They would have structured English, which we can see has the four steps, obtain the pay rate. The next step we can see is obtain the hours work. The next step is calculate the gross pay and finally we have display the gross pay. Now what these are more or less the same and they're pretty similar to the flowchart but what we can see here are two artifacts that programmers use first. You see you don't write the program first, you use these things here. You use these and the idea is you then convert these artifacts into code. What I showed when I introduced the idea of a sequence, I showed a program that we've already seen. So we have a, a feeling for what a sequence actually is. So in fact, what is important here is we've seen a flow chart, we've seen a Nasi Schneiderman chart, and we've seen structured English. Now all of these are artifacts that belong in the programming world. The key is, however, the ones we really design with are the Nasi Schneiderman diagrams and the structured English representation of a design. And once we've done that design, we convert that design into code. Not the way it's actually been presented in this video, where I show you the code first. But there are some important things we need to consider about flowcharts, Nasi Schneiderman diagrams, and also structured English. 
Let's have a look at the artifacts we've been discussing side by side. There's the flowchart. We can see all the steps and the arrows between each of the steps. Here's the Nasi Snyderman diagram and here is the structured English. And we can see the Nasi Snyderman structured English are numbered. They don't have to be numbered. It's up to the individual programmer whether they wish to number them as you can see. What we can say and what I recommend is that you have the flowchart in your mind's eye. It's important to know what the structure is. But when it comes to design your code, to decide what the steps are, don't use a flowchart. I recommend that you use a Nasi Snyderman chart or structured English. A flowchart is there to help us realize what a sequence is. But it's not something we use to design. We can use Nasi Snyderman diagrams and structured English. My preference, I use structured English. Sometimes I'll use Nasi Snyderman charts. It's entirely up to you as an individual what you use. But I would like to emphasize that flowcharts are for a programmer's mind eye. Don't use them to design with. Now, when I've been talking about Nasi Snyderman diagrams and structured English, I've been referring to design. In fact, Nasi Snyderman diagrams and structured English allow us to represent the algorithms, which are the solutions to the specifications we're given. And of course, those solutions have to be converted into code. And in the case of the code we're looking at, we're looking at Python code. But it's important to realize that sequence is just one of the program constructs. The other program constructs that are particularly interesting for us as programmers are selection and iteration. And another word for iteration is, in fact, repetition. But sequence is the most fundamental one. This is where a program performs one step, then another step, then another step in a sequence as we've described already. Check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.